In the following examples, we will measure steady state anisotropy spectra. We start with an empty workspace and call the excitation anisotropy wizard. The sample is Coumarin 6 in propylene glycol. This is a viscose solvent that slows down the rotational motion. Let's choose a username. In this case, temperature control is important and we will cool the sample down to 10 degrees Celsius. Stirring is not necessary. We choose a suitable photomultiplier and grating combination, specify the emission wavelength, and define the scan range and the step size. The next step is optimization of the spectrometer settings. We will measure several spectra at different polarizations. In order to maintain valid photon counting conditions, the wizard now performs a pre-scan and then checks the peak count rate at both emission polarizations. The task is finished and we can now acquire the necessary polarized spectra. The wizard starts automatically with a default short integration time. This can be changed any time, but we will proceed fast. First, an excitation spectrum is recorded while the emission is monitored at vertical polarization. Needless to say that the excitation intensity is simultaneously monitored with a reference detector. A second spectrum is recorded, now monitoring the horizontally polarized fluorescent component. As a final step, the so-called G-factor is measured using horizontally polarized excitation light. An optional next step is to record a blank sample. We shall skip this step and save the results. The anisotropy spectrum is automatically calculated by opening the data container. The result is a bit noisy due to short accumulation time selected earlier. Let us smooth the curve slightly and also overlay a scaled excitation intensity spectrum. We can save these modifications as a new analysis result without affecting the integrity of the original experimental data. It is very convenient now to record an emission anisotropy spectrum of the same sample. We do not need to re-enter or change many settings. Only the excitation wavelength and the scan range has to be specified. The next step is optimization as usual. The measurement will involve several spectral scans at various polarizer settings. The wizard now performs a pre-scan with a tilted polarizer in order to find the apparent emission maximum. Then the co signal count rate is optimized at the peak 
and checked for all necessary combinations of polarizer settings. Again, data acquisition starts automatically with the shortest possible integration time. This can be changed in order to get more precise results, but we will now proceed fast. To calculate an emission anisotropy spectrum, we need four polarized emission spectra. Two spectra are recorded with excitation polarization set to vertical. Another two spectra are recorded with excitation polarizer set to horizontal. The measurements are completed. The wizard is able to measure a blank sample, but we will skip this step again. Data analysis is automatically performed by opening the data container. The major result is the anisotropy spectrum. However, the spectral dependency of the g-factor is also plotted. We can smooth the spectrum a little bit and also overlay a scaled emission intensity spectrum. Now we can save these modifications as a new analysis. And finally, let's compare the results. These are entirely consistent with the simple and uncomplicated emission from the first excited singlet state of Umarin 6.